Hello everyone, here is a review of DC Generator Lab for the Electrical Machines course that includes a self-excited DC generator, separately excited DC generator, and armature reaction. So uh, this, is, uh, this is a picture of the machine that we use in the lab. On the left side, we see block diagram of this generator. For simplicity, I just have two poles here. In reality, we have four poles for this particular machine. The field windings, which is this winding, is connected to an external power supply for a separately excited DC generator. On the top, we can see circuit diagram of this generator. RFC, this is rheostat that we can see it here from the terminal uh, of, uh, of the machine. We can change the resistance of the rheostat in order to control the amount of current that runs through field winding. So when we change field winding, uh, we can change field density and flux density inside the machine. RFW is the resistance of field winding. Also for armature, we have another resistance that we call it RA, and that represents the amount of resistance we see from armature wires. Uh, armature voltage follows this equation. So EA is K times phi times RPM. If we maintain a fixed speed for prime mover, and we make sure that uh, external power supply and rheostat resistance they don't change during measurements that means our flux or phi will be the same so because of this equation we can see in a separately excited dc generator ea or eg uh, in the armature must be uh, constant so what we did next we used a resistor in order to measure uh, load characteristics of this machine so first, the first measurement that we did uh, in lab number three was the open circuit measurement. When the, uh, when the generator is open circuit, that means armature current is zero. When the armature current is zero, V terminal and EA are the same. So by open circuit measurement, uh, by open circuit uh, case, we can measure EA by simply measuring terminal voltage. After this measurement, we connected the load to the terminal. Once you connect load to the terminal, there will be a current that flows into the load resistor. In a separately excited DC generator, the load current and armature current are the same because they are in series. So IA and IL are equal. Then we can draw, we can draw changes of voltage when we increase load current. So when we increase load current, we see that terminal voltage drops. So this is what we see in a terminal voltage characteristic. When you use Excel to draw uh, VT versus IL or IA. Uh, from the equation, we expect VT plus RA times IA to be EA and we already know in a separately excited DC generator EA is constant but the problem is when we add uh, when we add VT and RAIA from the measurements because you can measure IA and you can measure terminal voltage and RA is something around 8 ohm again you can measure this so when we add VT plus RAIA we end up with something like this. So this is Vt plus Ra times Ia. As you can see here, and when you draw the figure using Excel, you see that you won't see a flat line. That means there's a difference between between open circuit voltage or EA and uh, VT plus RAIA. This difference uh, between the two measurements, let me use another color here to show you. 
So the difference between these two curves, the difference between the two curves between the flat line and VT plus RAIA is something that we call it armature reaction. And the reason for armature reaction is when we have current running through the wires of armature, these wires create a little field that interrupts the main field of the field winding. So because the main field is interrupted by, uh, by the little fields of these armature wires, that means our effective field inside the machine decreases a little bit. Because of that, we have a voltage drop. This voltage drop is armature reaction. And you can see that when the current is higher, when we have much loading effect, we have more armature reaction. And it's because when you take more current through armature, those currents create more field and they interrupt the main field stronger. So if you make another figure, So, for example, here I can draw armature reaction versus current. So, that's armature reaction versus current. So, this is IA and this is armature reaction voltage. So when we have no current or when we have, uh, when we have uh, open circuit, you see that the armature reaction is almost zero. So that means VT plus RAIA, they match with EA. But when we increase the loading current or IL, then we have more armature reaction. So that's how the armature reaction looks like. And also we need a correction for our formula because we already know that VT plus RAIA is not equal to EA. So we add another term here, and that term is armature reaction. Okay, now if we change the configuration to a self-excited shunt generator, that means now we don't have any external power supply for our field winding and the field winding is connected to armature. In this case, armature voltage again follows this equation, which is K times phi times RPM. The main difference between this excitation and separately excited generator is that if we have open circuit terminal, the armature current won't be zero because the armature current goes to field winding this time. So if we add load to the circuit, uh, even at no load condition, you would have some sort of armature current that flows to the field. Again, similar to separately excited generator, we connect the load to this machine. When we connect the load, uh, the armature current is going to be uh, distributed between two branches. Some of it goes to the load, some of it goes to the field. Because of this, IA or armature current is load current plus field current. So that's one of the main differences between a separate, uh, between a self-excited generator and a separately excited uh, generator. And again, F, if you want to draw terminal voltage, so let me draw terminal voltage versus armature current, you see that uh, the voltage drops faster. And the reason is uh, the armature is supplying both field and load. So similar to the previous, uh, to previous experiment, if we add RAIA to this curve, so let me write VT plus RA times IA. The terminal voltage won't be EA plus RAIA because we also have armature reaction. So the question here is how do we find armature reaction uh, for this machine? Because uh, because some of the armature current goes to some of the armature current goes to the field and some of it goes to goes to the load. So if we draw another curve for 
Vt plus Ra times Ia plus armature reaction voltage. First of all, you must note that uh, if you add these three variables, Ea won't be constant in this case compared to a separately excited machine. The reason is uh, field current also changes in this experiment. Because the field current changes, phi also changes a little bit. And because phi is changing, Ea is not constant in a self-excited DC generator. So you won't expect a flat line for Ea compared to the previous case. The question is, how do we find uh, how do we find V A B V A R? Sorry, uh, the armature reaction uh, voltage. Uh, because right now we know that both E A and V A R they are changing. So one good solution to this problem is going back to the separately excited generator. In the previous experiment, we could calculate a characteristic curve. Uh, for armature reaction versus armature current. So in a separately excited DC generator, we know how much VAR we would expect for every armature current. So for example, if our armature current, let's say, is uh, 300 milliamp, uh, that's how much we expect for VAR. If we have another armature current, we know how much uh, armature reaction we would expect. So. Going back to the previous case, for every IA in this curve, you can find armature reaction. So once you have the armature reaction, then it's going to be really easy because you just add for every case, you just add them to VT plus RAIA. And that's how uh, you can calculate EA uh, for this uh, generator.